Hi, this is Edison Abelard, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I created this camera rig for a motion graphics piece I did. Now, I'm going to hit play so you can see what the graphics looks like. And this is actually for a Unity 3D course I did on how to create augmented reality with Unity 3D and Vuforia. Uh, all the assets were created in Moto, and I went ahead and used Moto for the motion graphics as well. We actually recently um, turned over to using Moto for both our game development as well as our motion graphics. So this was a nice little practice for me to get used to using the tools in Moto to both create a game or create an interactive experience as well as creating a motion graphics for that experience. So it was nice, everything done in Moto. Now if I just bring that out, what I have here is I actually imported uh, one of the scenes from the actual uh, motion graphics and all I have here is just uh, just the ground and then if I just scrub through, actually we need more time. Let me update this to 480. If I just scrub through, you'll see I have the animation for the tent, I have, I have the animation for the rocks as well as the, uh, the wood. Now I did strip this down so we can just focus on just the animation and creating a camera rig and not worry about the textures and everything else. So first things first, how do we go ahead and get started with creating the rig or why I did this? You could come up to here, go into render, and do a turntable render. Now, the problem with this is, is that you can do your frames, you can do your frames per second, you can do, you know, spin around geometry, and you can do all that, but the problem is, is you don't get to see it. You have to actually render out an image sequence or a movie. So if we did this, we hit render, this will have to save, and this is just, you know, ends up being so much more work. And I want to be, I'm a visual person, so I want to be able to see these things. So what I decided to do was, is I wanted to, to create an an animation that I have control over both time and speed. So the way I went about this is, is I went and I created, now while you're in this mode, I'm going to uh, start off, because most of you will probably start off in this models tab, this will probably look more familiar. What you want to do is I'm using control tab and now I'm going to choose a setup. After choosing setup, you'll probably start off with this screen and with the setup tab selected, but you want to go down to modifiers and then we can really get started on this. Over here, you, ha you still have access to um, some of your modeling tools. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, I want to create a circular curve. So the easiest way to do that is, is to create a cylinder. And I'm going to, I'm using shortcuts here. So uh, the number two to, to select edge mode, edge component mode. And now I have this edge. Now what I want to do after that is, is I want to convert this to vertices. So what you can do is hold down the Alt key and then click on the vertices and then it'll convert that selection automatically to vertices for you. Now that we have the vertices selected, I can hit control P and it'll actually make a closed path. Now, the way you know how to do that is, is if you go to, into the curve palette, is, is down here you have the commands make closed curve and that's where I got the control P from. So you can either use a shortcut or click on that and it'll create that curve for you. Now you can see it here. There's, you know, you see this line. <clears throat> excuse me. You see this line, and then you see our geometry. So we don't want our geometry. So let's go ahead and select that, delete it, and now we have ourselves a curve. Let's rename this to path. Well, let's name it to cam path, just so we don't get confused with any other verbiage of path. And so how do we go ahead and select this and make and make our camera uh, conform to that path? Well, what we'll do is, is we'll select the camera. I'm just gonna, going to get rid of these two windows. Make sure the camera is selected. Shift select the path. And now this option for constraint comes in for path. Now there are other options here to, to better modify it, but we just want a straight path constraint. So we select the path constraint. And now our camera is on this path. So you'll see now our camera has the constraint here. And I'm actually going to take this and just drop it down into our, our schematic view. And what we have is, is we have this, uh, this option for percentage. And as you can see, as I increase the path percentage, the camera goes around the path. So 0 and 100 are the same location. So what we want to do is, is we want over time to make our path, our camera, animate along the path. So we're already probably up to like 40% of the way there. So now you'll notice this is actually missing the percentage option. So I'm going to come here 
into channels and what's great about Moto is, is you can just take this and just drop it in there and boom you have access to it. So why am I doing it this way? Well I want this to be time based and I don't want this to be frame based and this is now this is coming from my game development background. If you run any animation off of frame base, what'll happen is is let's say we change this to what do we have? It's at 24 frames per second. If we change this now to let's say 60 frames per second our keyframes would be off and it wouldn't work the same. And so what will end up happening is, is your animation will be off. And in game development, a lot of times the actual frame rate drops. So let's say you have too many effects going on or the user's system ends up you know, taking a hit. It'll jump from 60 frames per second to maybe 50. And that little difference can literally throw off your whole entire um, simulation. So what I want to do is, is use you know, that experience and some experience that I have with other motion graphics um, suites, and I want this to be time-based. So what's really cool is, is Moto has all of that already built into this um, schema. So what we can do is, is come down here and go into, excuse me, time, and just grab the time. Now, if we try to just plug time right into our percentage, well, and, and we scrub, you'll see that you know you get this weird jumping around so we can't go directly into time what we what we want to do is is we want to actually limit that time to always be no more than one because that's what our value is our value is 100 so um, and that's 100 percent so the way we do that is is we add a math modifier and we come down here to this is really a remainder mod modifier you hear modulo I think it's how you pronounce it and what we do is, is we plug it into here and then we plug that into our percentage. And what will happen is we'll still get the same effect of nothing really happening. So what I want to do now though is I want to grab this modifier and there's value A which is being piped in from time. So if we move this up you'll see that, gets val that comes in. And what we want to do now is, is change value B. And value B is actually uh, what we want the percentage to be. So let's say we, add, we make this 2 you'll notice that the result will never go above 2. So you see it gets to like 1.95 and then boom, comes back to 2 because we want the remainder and that's what this value B gives us, is it gives us the max that this will ever be. Now 2 makes that go around relatively fast. So what I want this to be is I actually want that to be a value of 1. And so now with the value of 1, this will never go up to 1. And so our percentage, if we click on that, if we look at our percentage, our percentage now will always stay 0. And I'm just going to slowly go up. You'll see it goes up to 50%, 60, 70, 80, 90, goes right back to 0. So now it's at 60 frames per second. Awesome. Now, if I change this to 24 frames per second, we don't have to worry. This will still work. If I keep going, let me select this again. If I keep going, I come down to 24, you'll see that the percentage will always be the same. So as I'm approaching 24 frames, boom, it goes back to zero. So that's how I had uh, created the rig. And now from here, I can actually select this and um, I want to scale it down so it's closer to uh, you know, the size that I want it to be. I'll bring it down. I'm actually going to do a little more scaling, bring it down, there you go. Now the other thing I can do is I can go ahead and create a, uh, let's create a locator, let me add, and I'm going to create just a blank locator, and this also comes in larger than our scene, so we'll go back to display and then same thing, 0.1, and what I want to do now is, is I actually want to select the, the, I want the camera now to to be constrained or to point at this locator. So there are a number of ways we can do that. Your, your first impression would be to select the camera, select the locator, and try to do a directional constraint. And you'll notice that it's not highlighting. How come I can't do a directional constraint? Well, the camera actually in itself has the ability to, if I, if I actually select our camera and I select this, it actually has the ability to um, to set the target. So we can actually set the target to our locator. So now what we have is, is we have our camera going around our path and always looking at that locator. All right? And if I if I hit play, we can actually run this in real time. So 
just from looking at the camera, you can see it's probably going to be nauseating to look at this camera move so fast. And, you know, we can actually do a number of things. You know, we can move this locator around and, you know, we can try to find new ways to kind of, you know, I'm going to say hide the fact that we're definitely moving too fast. Um, but that'll just, you know, confuse the user. So the best way to do that is to be able to slow it down. And so the way I slowed it down was is I wanted to have a modifier. So I'm going to t to select our locator here and I'm going to call it uh, cam time for no apparent reason. If I come back into our modifiers, I can actually add uh, a channel, a user channel. So let's add a user channel and we can call it time delay. Uh, and then we want this to be just Mm, we can make it just a float. And so we click OK. And now what we're going to same thing as we did before, we're going to channel and we're going to come down here and we have our time delay. So how do we get our time delay now to affect this? Well, what we're going to do from here is, is I want to actually use division. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to grab a math, a basic math, and we're going to divide. And what I'm going to do now is, is I'm actually going to skip this portion and I'm going to get the time, put this into here, and now pick something to divide it by. So now we have the time coming in. And if I select the model, you'll see that, you know, dividing it by zero ends up giving us that. So let's go ahead and set this to our time delay. And then let's say so we set our time delay to 12. And now what will happen is, is it'll go now a little bit slower. So as you can see, now I can use this time factor, really, not just a delay, to now change the speed of which the animation happens. And, and if we do the math, really what we're doing is we're taking time. So we're taking one second and we're dividing it by 12. So we're going a twelfth of the speed. So if I want to change this, I can change this to, let's say, I'm double clicking in here. If I change this to 1 divided by 1, you'll see it goes back to our regular speed. If I take it and I divide it by two, it'll slow that down a little bit, but still not good enough. And now this gives us a chance to, to really play with it. 24, you know, it goes on even slower. And what's great about this rig is, is now I have the ability to not only change the timing of it, I can actually, uh, because this is just straight modal, we can actually, uh, we can actually record this and change the value over time. So we can make it, um, we can add keyframes and make it work at different speeds. So it ends up being, you know, overall a win-win for us to do it this way. Uh, the other, something else that I did during the, the making of that is, is because I had the ability to both constrain the, if I change the scale, if I had the ability to constrain the size of our, of our, our circle here, our path, I was actually able to now change the angle of this. And if I hit render, I can change the angle of this real time and I can look at it. And this will keep updating. And then I have the ability to look at the locator and then change the pitch of our angle as well. So now we have a turntable, but I have full control over where the actual camera is being rendered from. So I hope you enjoyed this. Hope it wasn't too long. And now you got to see a, a really cool way to, to use the schematic view to start rigging in Moto and see just how simple it is to not only do game animations and do game modeling in Moto, but you can simply throw together uh, a motion graphics piece and have full control over it using math and not just keyframes. This is Edison Abelard from Passion47. I'm out.